The number one reason why you have weeds is because there's an unfulfilled ecological niche in your soil or ecosystem. So real quick, my name's Till Simmons. I help growers transition from conventional farms to regenerative farms, implementing ideas like this and changing the way we think about weeds and, and the way we farm so that we can increase our profitability and production. If you wanna work with us, uh, I've put our link to the website below. Um, check it out, let me know, cheers. So this whole video is, I guess, based off the concept that weeds are only there because they're fulfilling a uh, ecological niche. Now what that means is that that uh, specific weed that's growing is only able to be growing because it can outcompete any other plant around it. So this concept is almost similar to um, say businesses in the sense that if you have all these businesses which are similar and the same uh, and they're all providing the same value and then you have another business that opens up and it has this totally new thing and it allows people to uh, get what they want um, then that business is probably more likely to outcompete all these other ones. So say you have all these ice cream shops but only one uh, serves uh, toppings, that probably uh, that one shop will probably go better than the other ones simply because it has it's able to fulfill a niche of everyone else. Anyway, so weeds. So weeds in a similar way um, almost act as that. So probably the best way to think about this is with a diagram. So say um, this line shows a profile of different niches, right? So we have um, uh, either like a, a nutrition profile or um, so this niche is uh, soil compaction and uh, soil fertility, water, rudder, rudder, rudder. And say this one here is um, uh, nitrogen availability. And so the nitrogen availability is so really high in this soil. This niche will allow for plants that favour high nitrogen to outcompete all these other weeds. So, so, uh, so for example, like lamb quarter, lamb's quarter, um, it prefers high nitrogen soils. Therefore, when we have a small niche of nitrogen excess, that is more likely to outcompete everything else. In a, in a similar way, if the soil is compacted, something like sunflowers, which have a deep taproot, are able to outcompete other plants that aren't able to push it through that compaction layer. Anyways, so this is, um, I guess what this whole idea of weeds are built off. It's it's not that that plant is there to simply annoy you in your farming. It is there to fulfill a ecological niche that you are not fulfilling. And so I've just thought of a couple uh, of these niches. Now I'm sure there's plenty others and I'm sure this doesn't apply to every situation, but um, feel free to comment with whatever you think I'm missing or uh, I've got it wrong. But essentially, in say very hard and compacted soils, bare soils where there's heaps of sunlight, um, but very shallow soils, we're gonna get these really, I, I call them cover, cover plants, and or cover weeds. They are low to the ground, they have very short root systems, they probably have runners, and they spread across the ground like band-aid. So, this particular weed is fulfilling an eco uh, ecological niche of just heaps of available sunlight um, and the fact that they can grow on pretty compact soils. And so if you see these in your paddocks, um, have a look at what these plants are doing and think about what you can do to um, fulfill that niche. So cattle plants. Next are protectors or something to that extent. These are like uh, thistles, anything with a, a physical uh, defense mechanism like spikes, um, anything you don't really want to touch. These tend to have pretty thick uh, roots or tap roots. Um, they are improving the soil. Um, they are still in pretty low fertility soils. They usually come after the cover one, uh, cover plants. But yeah, these are thistles. Um, they aren't really eaten by livestock. And so for that case, they're fulfilling an ecological niche to improve uh, the soil. Next are the compaction removers. Now a lot of these probably do have a lot of crossover, um, but compaction removers, there's a compaction layer that um, a lot of plants can't, I guess, push through. These have strong root systems, which allow for uh, the plant to push through that layer and access a totally new profile of soil, which has heaps of uh, nutrients. So say, for example, that's the compaction layer these plants are able to push through um, and hence outcompete everything else. If everything else is only growing in this tiny bit of soil here, and these guys are able to access all of this, 
then they have all this new nutrients that they're able to catch up. Um, so that's like sunflowers and tillage radish. So you can use you can use those ideas to build a um, cover crop um, mixture from I guess these uh, niches. Another niche is soil aggregators. So that's more like the grasses that have um, really fine fibrous root uh, structures to hold together really loose uh, soils. Another one is, and this is probably a really big one, uh, nitrogen or nutrient regulators. And so I've broken that up into nitrogen specifically, um, plus and minus, and other nutrients. And so in terms of the nitrogen, we have um, uh, plus nitrogen. So all the other conditions are available for these plants to grow, except there's a lack of nitrogen. Now, what plants can grow on that? Probably legumes. So legumes are able to form a symbiotic relationship with bacteria, with rhizomium bacteria, which supply nitrogen to the plant for exchange of sugars. And so that plant is fulfilling a niche of, I guess, a lack of uh, nitrogen. It's able to grow because it's able to make its own uh, nitrogen. And so in that, in, in that sense, if there's a lack of nitrogen, legumes uh, probably outcompete anything else. There's also a group of plants that uh, regulate an excess of nitrogen. So this is like lamb's quarter, I think uh, pigweed, um, I'm sure there's a bunch of others, but essentially they are only able to outcompete everything else because there's so much other, there's so much more nitrogen that they're able to take up and utilize. Now there's um, a whole range of different plants that are able to um, outcompete everything else because there's either a, uh, a deficiency or an excess of those nutrients. So for example, I'm pretty sure uh, Patterson's Curse, and we all know Patterson's Curse is a big weed and a big problem. It causes uh, damage to I think, uh, livestock liver. But the interesting thing about Patterson's Curse is that it, I'm pretty sure it accumulates copper. And so in, in soils with low copper, um, that plant is able to accumulate copper from the soil profile. And then uh, essentially when it dies, it releases all that copper allowing other plants to take up that copper and grow. So over time, um, Patterson's Curse should be fixing copper into the soil and allowing other plants to outcompete it. This, this is all in relation to ecological succession. Um, and I'm sure there's all these other, other plants that do that. Um, even like thistles, the, the actual thistle part of the thistle plant is high in uh, silicas. And so when these die, they release all the silica into uh, the soil, which is available for other plants to pick up. And another, um, I guess, weed we could we could call them um, is the uh, ecosystem transition plants. So this is actually like just trees. Uh, we're going from, say, grasslands into uh, bush, uh, uh, bushes or uh, forest. And that's where we're, our ground's actually so good that trees are starting to uh, come up and starting to populate. Now, if you're uh, cropping and you don't really want trees in your, in your field, um, that's understandable, and then you'd call these a weed. Um, but a lot of the time in you know, pastures and stuff, this is not probably the worst um, situation to have. Anyway, so these, these are some categories of weeds, and I guess the, the whole point of this talk is to talk about that weeds are, they're not just there to, to annoy you, but they're there simply because there's something that you're lacking or in excess of your, in your soil. And so if you can identify that, by identifying these different plants and then making up solutions uh, to fix that problem, then uh, you probably have a long-term solution to solving your weeds. So for example, Patterson's Curse. Now we just talked about how it accumulates copper. So a, a, a thing to potentially experiment with on your farm is you get a, a copper um, a foliar or a copper fertilizer and apply it to that area and see how the other plants outcompete the uh, Patterson's Curse. And so in theory, all the pastures and grasses around that should then get a, a bit more of a, a boost to their um, production and then smother out the Patterson's Curse, in theory. Now, try it, see what works, see what doesn't. There might be other uh, problems in your ecosystem or agro-ecosystem when we're growing, um, uh, doing agricultural things, but simply try to identify what the actual problem is and not just applying a, um, a herbicide is cheaper and you get all these other benefits from it. So, um, compaction. So if you have a comp uh, really hard compaction soil and you're getting all these you know, thistles or potentially stuff to break it up, why don't you put a cover crop of sunflowers and tillage radishes and, and all these 
other things to break up that compaction layer, making the soil better for other plants um, to grow in. Um, and so that's, that's, I guess, the idea of weeds not as, you know, things that want to annoy you, but weeds as indicator plants to help you improve your soil. Cool, so if you like that, um, let me know. And if you have any other ideas of other weeds um, and examples of some uh, nutrient regulators, I'd love to actually hear that. Um, yeah. So put that into the comments. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. Cheers.